East Makushta 3, Ono Sato took another visit to Juryo and pulled it together to get his Kachikoshi against Hida no Umi. Considering the opponents that beat him this tournament, he didn't do too bad. West Makushta 3, Mukai Nakano also visited Juryo and got his Kachikoshi. Ukrainian Shishi finally got a win against Russian-born Roga with a Skuinage. Kageyaki beat Tomokaze and Dayamami took out Atami Fuji, resulting in a three-way tie at 10 wins. On the final day, Dayamami will go against Shishi, Tomokaze will take on Kita no Waka, and Atami Fuji will face Akua, who has one more chance at an 8th win. There's a small possibility of a 7-way playoff if all three of them lose, as there are 4 Rikshi at 9 wins who will all face different opponents. Hokuto Fuji went into day 14 with a chance to win it all, but Hakuoho made sure that didn't happen, tying the two of them up at 11 wins. Nishikigi was in the lead position the entire tournament until his third loss on day 13. Ryuden took him out of the race on day 14. The last Sekiwake battle of the tournament ended with a Kotenage win for Hoshoryu. This puts him in line with Hokuto Fuji and Hakuoho at 11 wins going into the final day. On day 15, Hokuto Fuji goes up against Nishikigi and Hoshoryu will face Hakuoho in the second to last match of the day. If Hokuto Fuji wins, he'll have to fight the winner of Hoshoryu versus Hakuoho. If Hokuto Fuji loses, it will be between the Sekiwake and the lowest ranked top division wrestler. It's been 60 years since a wrestler under the instruction of a sumo association chairman has won a top division title. As a pupil of chairman Hakkaku, Hokuto Fuji has a chance to do just that. If Hakuoho wins, he'll be the first teenager in 31 years to hoist the Emperor's Cup. He would also be the first top division debutant to win it in over 100 years. Hoshoryu is cutting it close for Ozeki promotion, so getting past him will be no easy task. 